this is John Milner interviewing Dr. Helen Northern, Professor Emeritus at the University of Southern California. The interview is taking place in Los Angeles on June 10th, 1987. Dr. Northern, question I'd like to ask is, how did you ever happen to become a social worker? I don't know. And I cannot remember a time when I was not interested in working with young children. First of all, probably in preschool, kindergarten, or elementary years. Then I became concerned about the difficulties they had in getting along well in school. So I sought the best education I knew of at that time, which was a degree in psychology from the University of Washington. Then I went into graduate work at the University of Washington which was a very behaviorist-oriented school. I gradually became disillusioned with that way of helping people and quite accidentally discovered that there was a profession of social work which might have given me more of what I wanted than would a graduate degree in psychology. Can you remember so it was how a natural you... development. Yeah. Can you remember how you discovered that? Was it from your reading or from friends? or? It was really quite funny because I went in to complain to an advisor whose name was Stevenson Smith, who was director of the psychology department at the University of Washington. I said I did not want to do a dissertation on conditioned response theory. He was very disappointed in that because he thought I could make a good contribution there. In great disgust he said, maybe there is a fellowship in psychiatric social work <laughs> and maybe you should investigate that instead. I did, but I did not go to the University of Washington School of Social Work. This was a very poor school at that time. Uh -huh. So you went to the University of Chicago? No, I did not. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. I knew you had. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And your PhD is from Pittsburgh? Bryn Mawr. Bryn Mawr. Very good. That shows how inaccurate my... You don't know me very well, John. I do, but not that well. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to uh, joining the faculty of the University of Southern California, uh, what was your social work practice experience? Before I went for a master's degree in social work, I worked in a variety of things in Seattle which is my hometown. Yes. I directed a camp for children who were suffering from... <laughs> uh, first of all, nutritionally deprived children. <laughs> And secondly, from children with, uh, oh heavens, I can't think of the name of it right now. Mm -hmm. So I got to see very quickly the relationship of health to uh, satisfactory functioning and so forth. Mm -hmm. I also worked for a while in Jewish Family Service in Seattle. Mm -hmm as what we'd now call a paraprofessional, but as an untrained worker. Mm -hmm. Also as a camp director, a uh, program director mm -hmm. in the Camp Fire Girls Camp mm -hmm. and worked with them in their teenage program 
as an advisor to uh, adolescents. It was at a time when there were many, many problems they were having. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had to learn more about how to help them with their personal and family problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what led me into wanting more education. Yes. And then did you start teaching after you got your degree? No, I went to the University of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I went there because after exploring schools of social work, I wanted a school where I could learn both individual and group work, mm -hmm. uh, which was not very popular at that time. There were two schools of social work at that time which offered that. One was Western Reserve University, the other was the University of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I could not say, I want to be a group worker, I want to be a case worker. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to be both, which absolutely knocked most schools of social work off of their rockers. <laughs> they couldn't understand that. Yes. But at that time, Pittsburgh was a relatively new school. Mm -hmm. and it had that kind of a focus. Mm -hmm. Then I became very quickly a field instructor for that school in a new program where I supervised students mm -hmm. who were both in casework and group work. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately led me to decide I wanted a doctorate. I went to Bryn Mawr because it was one of the few schools of social work in that day which offered a doctorate and because it had a very good reputation for research which I was interested in at that time. Mm -hmm. And after that you went to Hawaii. After that I went to Hawaii uh -huh. for two years. And we're on the faculty at the university, the university school there. University of Hawaii, uh -huh. where I taught group work. I, uh, with a person named Tom Coleman, we developed field work placements in the mental health center, which was located on the University of Hawaii campus. Mm -hmm. And we both worked together on providing casework and group work for the students placed there. Mm -hmm. I also taught research, community organization, group work there. Mm -hmm. yes. Tom Coleman was in school in New York when I was there. I, I, I thought you might know yes, him because no. he'd come out of Seattle at one time. That's right. No, that's right. <laughs> it's interesting. Small world. Yes. <laughs> And you came to the University of Southern California what year? 1953. 1953, yeah. That's a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the I time... For a few years. Uh-huh. The time you came, I think Arlene jo Johnson was dean, and she brought you in as a specialist in group work. And then what happened? <laughs> oh, I know, but when she wrote to me, her challenge was that she wanted the faculty of the School of Social Work, of whom you were one, to become more knowledgeable about group process and group work so that it could be more fully integrated into the curriculum of the School of Social Work. She had was one of the most visionary people I ever knew in terms of her commitment to what she called the whole of social work and social work as a profession as contrasted with an amalgamation of mm -hmm. a series of specialties. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting because she said that 
as a first step, the faculty had planned one integrated course in the second year to be taught by Rose Green, the dean, and me. Mm -hmm. And we were to look at the similarities and differences between casework, group work, and community organization. The students had two hours with the three of us, and then they broke up for the third hour mm -hmm. in terms of casework, group work, community organization. The three of us thought that course was very successful, but some of the faculty complained that they didn't think their students were getting enough depth in casework. Uh, so uh, Arlene didn't want to battle that any longer, so that went by the board. Mm -hmm. But that really was the beginning of that was the generic beginning. That Practice. was the beginning, and that was very that was very important because although I felt that that uh, the dean gave in a little too quickly to what were a few comments from faculty, I yeah. think if we talked it through more fully and worked it through, the faculty might have come along. Yes. And further, further developed it. I, I think that that uh, she and Rose, mm -hmm. me being new, didn't have as much. Were a little taken aback by not having a fully positive response to it. It was given up too soon. Yes. Now, in relation to that, I think came a little later. You were in heading a project at the school, a student project. Uh, with Metropolitan State Hospital, which I found to be a fascinating project, and it was written up and published and became nationally known. I wonder if you explain a little what this was, because it really was a merger of group work, case work, that was very and community org. Thing, because at the time I came there, one of the things we were interested in was expanding the use of groups in many different kinds of settings. And so we had started that at Metropolitan State Hospital along with several other places. Pacific State Hospital was another one. And uh, Rose Green was the liaison and advisor for casework. I was a liaison and advisor for group work. Mm -hmm. So we'd go trotting out there together because we thought that was better than we had a united sure. front. And uh, it became very obvious mm -hmm. to us that there was an awful lot of the generic that students were getting. At that time, NIMH was giving a lot of money for new projects in mm -hmm. terms of mental health. So... We applied for a grant and got it, mm -hmm. which made it possible for us to have student stipends mm -hmm. at Metropolitan where students would get both casework and group work mm -hmm. to pay for a full-time field instructor there and for part of the time of one of our research faculty Edith Tufts, who mm -hmm. worked with us on that project. Yes. And really... Now this really was taking the severely mentally ill patients oh. out of the back wards. Oh, absolutely. And eventually placing them out into the community. Oh, absolutely, and part of the groups were on pre-discharge planning. You know, it has bothered me ever since that we we really demonstrated the success of some of that. I remember. The, the, the groups, were before they were ready to do that, and then the pre-discharge planning groups, helping them back into the community. 
really a very good record on that. Mm -hmm. And look what's happened now. Yes, they never followed through with. Never followed talk. through the. Yes. And, and it's it's painful mm -hmm. to see that yes. some of the good things that were demonstrated just mm -hmm. haven't been carried mm -hmm. on. Now, a report of that project was published. Was it in Social Work? one of the magazines, professional magazines. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly yes. where there was a report, but there were several articles. Yes, they, I remember one particularly that was good. In addition to your work at the school, I know that you've taken leadership in many of the local and national agency programs. One particularly was with the campfire girls. <laughs> so that some of your early experience of the campfire you continued your interest in. Could you tell us a little about that? I was at one time just invited to come into the Los Angeles area Camp Fire Girls to do some uh, staff training in relation to primarily understanding the needs of girls of different ages and adapting their programs to that. Then before I knew it, I was elected to the national board uh, at a time when that agency was really reaching out to new ways of doing things mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, you spoke at one of the national meetings, I yes. remember. And uh, that, uh, that led to a number of very interesting outreach programs. Mm -hmm. I was chairman of the national program committee one of the things that was developed in relation to the Los Angeles Council was a program that really brought mental health services to seven and eight year old girls who were really failing in school mm -hmm. socially and academically mm -hmm. worked very closely with the Los Angeles school system uh, employed MSW social workers, several of whom were our own graduates, mm -hmm. to work with these youngsters in groups, to work with the school, to help them better meet their needs, to reach out to them. Edith Tufts did the research on that. This was funded by the, children, the NIMH grant. Mm -hmm and a very successful project. But again, once a demonstration project is over, you know, and another was a, a national project which was an outreach to communities in several major cities around the country mm -hmm. to see how they could reach girls who were from minority ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm or more poverty communities, a very interesting kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's had a change in national leadership. Yes. It was no longer their priority. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I think some of it has been preserved. but I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it has been preserved, but the particular thing... But change comes slowly. Went by the board. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you continued your interest with that organization? No, not, not really. Not recently, yeah. Uh -huh. No, not recently, not since I left the board. Mm -hmm. What do you see as some of the major changes that have taken place in practice of social work since you began your career? That's a big question. <sighs> Nobody can answer that question adequately, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I believe that 
It has gone in cycles. I think first there was the great movement toward understanding the interrelationship between work with individuals and work with work with groups, looking at the similarities and differences, trying to move in there. The um, great expansion of social work into mental health settings. A little later, the great expansion of social work into medical settings, which had always been there. That was the first so-called specialization, probably, but really very limited use of social workers, I would think, more as handmaidens to physicians than as a a profession in our own rights. The greater development of feeling like a profession to the really movement toward generic integrated practice where social workers were expected to and hopefully competent Mm -hmm. to work with people according to the assessment of their needs, whether that meant an individual, a couple, a family, a group, Mm -hmm. or some kind of community interventions. Mm -hmm. Back, I think, more to not the same kind of specialization that existed early in the development of medical social work, which was practically medical case work and so forth, but to what we call concentrations in field of practice, to today where I'm afraid, I shouldn't say I'm afraid, but where I think we're moving into an era of even greater specialization and losing track of the generic knowledge of human behavior. Mm -hmm of the generic knowledge of principles of helping people. Mm -hmm. I I think that's where we are today. Mm -hmm. I suspect we'll come again to understanding Mm -hmm. that there's a common base of knowledge and principles. I hope so. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I've given my life to that. I feel there's a movement away from social agency practice to private practice. Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. You feel that will be extensive? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know how extensive it will be in terms of people in in full-time, independent, private practice because I think in all the health professions uh, that Uh, is uh, not going to be as prominent. Physicians, psychologists, and so forth are moving much more into health maintenance organizations, clinic practice where they share together, work Mm -hmm. across specializations. Mm -hmm. And I think there aren't very many social workers who are going to work full time just alone in an office there are going to be many more ways of collaborating Mm -hmm. with other social workers and collaborating with social agencies Mm -hmm. but I don't know where that's going to go but it certainly is here yes yes you're internationally known for your no I'm not writing (laughs) yes you are (laughs) <laughs> for your publications, and uh, I know that you've written several books, as well as a great many articles. I wonder if you give the titles of the books you've published. I haven't done that much, John. Yes, you have. No. I did social work with groups. That's the first real book. Uh-huh. That was published by what publisher? Columbia University Press. Yes. 1969. 1969, uh-huh. Then uh, I edited a book with Bob Roberts. Yes. On theories of social work with groups. Then I was part of a 
group of five of our colleagues who did a very small book called Child Family Neighborhood, a model of practice. June Brown, Bill Finch, me, Sam Taylor, and Marie Weil, which was a very small thing. Then I did my clinical social work book. And I've just done a new edition of Social Work with Groups. You say that's not very much? <laughs> well, you know, over now, such a long period of time, I probably never would have been promoted to associate professor <laughs> in today's world. <laughs> now, these have been translated into a number of foreign languages, haven't they? Mm hmm. How many lang how many different countries are published these? German, Dutch, Portuguese, Japanese. Yeah, that's truly international. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> Very good. <laughs> are you working on another book currently? I've just finished the new edition of Social Work with Groups. Uh huh. And then Kathleen and Elle. She's a senior author, though. I'm just the junior author. Uh huh. With Kathleen L. of a new book on work with families in health settings. Uh huh. That will come out when do you think? She signed a contract that said October, but it's going to be a lot longer than that. <laughs> Recently, you were chairman of a national conference of group work held here in Los Angeles. And uh, I wonder if you're going to continue to be active with the National Association. That is a very small group. Uh, it was started spontaneously by a few people who thought that people interested in group work should get together. And so they sponsored annual symposiums. And uh, uh, we'll have one in Boston in October uh, as chairperson of the last one I've been on the National Executive Committee but my term expires now mm -hmm. uh, I personally uh, I'm not in favor of their decision to set up a special call it a special organization as contrasted with a committee that sponsored the conference. Mm -hmm. They've decided to have an association for a membership association for the advancement of social work with groups. I'm not in favor of setting up a, another so-called professional organization. Mm -hmm. I believe they should work within the existing organizations such as NASW. Yes, yes. I believe that the way to advance social work practice with groups in today's world is to get it more integrated into social work as a whole as contrasted with separating it out. So I'm not in favor of that kind of separatist movement, which I think it is becoming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That some insist on keeping that one identity. Hmm? Some insist oh, on keeping this. That's one not identity. my identity. It never has been mine. I'm, I'm a social worker. Good. Not a group worker, a case worker, <laughs> community or a researcher. I'm a social worker. I've heard you say that <laughs> over many years. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like to be stereotyped. <laughs> it's my understanding that it's your plan to soon leave Los Angeles 
and live in your home state of Washington. And uh, <clears throat> I wonder what your plans are in relation to this. I have to sell my condominium. You have to sell your condominium here. <laughs> and move up there. And you'll be living where in Washington? I'm not sure, but I believe I'm going to Panorama City in Lacey. Uh huh. And you'll be spending some of your time at your summer in home. In my cabin uh -huh. on Pleasant Harbor on Hood Canal, uh -huh. which is not a canal, but more a fjord like yes. thing. It's uh -huh. not a man made canal. Uh huh. It's a beautiful, beautiful salt water. Oh, I, I know it's beautiful. Feet. <coughs> Very good. Uh -huh. And are your plans to do a great deal of traveling? Yes. And writing? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't desert Los Angeles completely, will you? I have been commuting to the Puget Sound area two or three times a year. Perhaps I will reverse that and commute to this area two or three times a year instead, just in reverse. We'll certainly hope that you will. So, I won't desert you. <laughs> That's enough, John. Oh, you want to end this at this point. <laughs> Don't you have something you'd like to add? No. No. Do you have anything to say to those students who might eventually want to become social workers? I just wish they would have the vision that Arlene Johnson had of social work as a great profession. Yes. With its values, its clarity of purpose, and the interrelationship of parts that makes up the whole. Mm -hmm. I think you've lived that in your career. <laughs> you know, really, really. Dr. Northern, thank you very much. Appreciate you doing this for us. Oh, Professor Milner. <laughs> <laughs>